a very fundamental change here is a huge shift to connected TV or CTV as it's called for short. And users we saw are spending more time with streaming than ever before. It's starting to get closer to half of the time split between streaming and linear TV. The time spent with streaming is fragmenting, however, as we saw again. So the fight for eyeballs is only getting more intense from the content or streaming provider's perspective. Also note here that you start seeing some fast players starting to show up. You see TRC, 2B, Pluto, and this is becoming a significantly big growth vector within streaming. And we believe strongly that this trend will continue. From the cable and broadcast world, that many channels can be typically and easily supported. For example, 15 cable channels had over a million viewers in 2022. And as sticker prices go down, this may continue at least for a bit. So this sets, with all of the thing trends that we saw, this sets a firm uh, ground and a solid ground for us to really think about how to bring uh, more uh, free content in front of users and how to make it meaningful for both users themselves for their satisfaction as well as businesses. And as streaming companies buy for more time, more eyeballs, they continue to invest in content. We have all seen the transition to original content from practically every popular streaming service and platform. At the same time, more recently, we are starting to see a slowdown. Even unrelated to the recent strikes, we are seeing a slowdown in original content. This is because pro producing original content is extremely expensive. And this slowdown is due to the growing pressure to become profitable. Where it used to be all about the number of subscribers before for streaming services, Wall Street is now looking for profits. So having a broader, more diversified revenue model than just subscriptions is becoming increasingly critical to even continue to remain and play in this market. So while streamers struggle to become profitable, they're also faced with headwinds in subscriptions. You see a big slowdown in subscriber growth and increase in churn. This is again because of back to the users expecting, expecting variety of content. And so this leads to a trend of users unsubscribing and resubscribing for specific content, which is problematic from a predictable business model perspective. And this is an important element of the machinery turning more and more towards fast. So as a solution to all these issues, streamers are returning to ads. They are bringing the dual revenue stream model from pay TV to streaming TV. This has actually been the core model for decades in media and entertainment. Content is dollars and it requires to be monetized via both subscription and ads. This is why it becomes critical to bring together the power of streaming platforms and services like Google TV does, as these all individual address parts of the partner's business models, but collectively they can address this duality. And it's really important for any platform or even a streaming service to approach it so that we can be a cohesive partner that helps our other partners in the ecosystem, irrespective of how they are leaning in on these two aspects for the business model options. For example, we see a wide variety of variability here. Some services provide purely free with ads, some are providing subscription-based, and some are anywhere in the middle of the spectrum, where some are providing tiered services, where there is a lower or free tier that has more ads, and a higher premium tier, which has either no ads or much smaller proportion of ads. Or they may be providing bundles where they try to bring different subscriptions with product portfolios to satisfy a wide variety of users. And so promotional discount and subscriptions but then being able to monetize using ads. So it's a very fascinating and exciting time to observe how these all evolve in parallel as these services fight for user eyeballs and user acquisition and retention in the end.